So this is the third video in our series on the best and worst plants in Vedic astrology. We did a little introduction. We've discussed some generalities around benefic or gentle planets. And in this video, we're going to explore malefic planets. And how do malefic planets function? Are they good or are they bad? Now, a malefic planet is a planet that's said to be cruel. The malefic planets that most people are familiar with are Saturn, Rahu, Ketu, Mars, the Sun, although the Sun is considered mildly malefic. Also, we can have um, a malefic moon, which is a moon that is moving towards new. It's moving away from the sun, going towards new, it's waning. And also a Mercury that is with malefics because Mercury acts like any planets that it's with. And when it comes to Mercury, you might have Jupiter and Venus and Mercury together in the same sign. Well, how do you determine? You tend to focus on which one is Mercury closer to by degree. Now, malefic planets. Once again, I must stress that we can't make a gener generalized, um, we can't take a generalized approach to these planets. There are so many nuances to consider, but we can consider, well, how do they work? Well, malefic planets work in such a way that do cause us pain and difficulty and stress and tension. However, Cruel planets also give us the ability, the fortitude, the discipline to benefit from that, to grow from that, to become stronger. Many astrologers, um, they focus on the malefics as though they're going to be profoundly destructive forces within the chart. And sometimes they are. But just like in yoga practice, the idea of Shiva, um, the the yogi god that, that dances the, the dance of destruction, well, from destruction comes new life. So if your astrologer is able to look at a malefic planet to see, number one, what kind of difficulty might it cause? Well, hopefully what the astrologer can then do is share, this is the difficulty you might have to go through, but here is the strength that you're going to derive from it. And people will tend to derive that strength based on a few factors. Number one, uh, how well is that malefic planet situated? Is it exalted? Is it supported by its friends? And again, in the Astral Vedic Astrology Apprenticeship Program, uh, we, we spend a lot of time looking at this on the course on the Lajitadya Vashtas, which is, a, I think, a eight or nine week course within that program. Um, but that, that gives us insights into, is this planet going to introduce you to difficulty, but also give you the strength and the fortitude and the power to become stronger because of it? So if we want to know if a malefic planet is going to be one of the worst planets or one of the best planets, we need to learn how to qualify, how is that planet doing? Is it supported in its agendas? And that, that's a key theme that we go through in this Ashul Vedic Astrology Apprenticeship Program is the agendas. Um, when we look at cruel planets like Mars, well, Mars is a soldier. Mars is an engineer. Mars is a fixer. Mars is able to have its agenda supported when um, it is in situations that require difficulty when there are problems to be fixed. A person who has a strong Mars thrives in difficult situations because then it has the capacity to use its energy to make things better. You'll see this um, in individuals who have a very scientific mentality or uh, a creative um, inventor-like mentality or, or people who are engineers. It's like they thrive on making things better and fixing things. And when they're not in that situation when they're on vacation or when they're at home. They're not as happy as they are in the difficulty because they're not putting their power to use. So these malefic planets have a place and they have an agenda and they need to be situated such that that agenda is given an opportunity to express itself in a healthy fashion. In my own life, when I'm in difficult situations, who do I want to have around me? 
Do I want to have people who have strong Jupiters and Venuses who are just caught up in luxury and ease? No. I want to have people around me who have gone through difficulties, who have strength, who have developed the fortitude through a malefic planet. Because if they're around, they can show me how to do it. They can show me how to be strong. So a malefic planet isn't necessarily bad or good, as we're seeing in the, the theme of this series. A malefic planet is subject to the situations in which it's placed. And it's also subject to how we use that planet. In the previous video, we discussed uh, Saturn, or excuse me, we discussed um, Mars and, and Venus combinations. Well, in this video, we can consider um, the combinations of Jupiter and Saturn. Jupiter allows us to see the bigger picture. Jupiter allows us to have optimism. Jupiter allows us to see possibilities. Well, if Jupiter is too strong, what we end up doing is simply wait for the opportunities to come or we see situations and we just believe it's going to work out okay. But if there's not a malefic planet behind it driving it, we don't necessarily experience the benefit clearly. However, um, if we have a strong Saturn, well, Saturn gives us the ability to do the tedious hard work for success, getting up day after day, doing the same thing, honing our skill, um, going through the dry spells, but taking one step at a time, one step at a time, forward and forward and forward. And if it was just Saturn, of course, we would probably get depressed and we would be um, unhappy and we would think, what's the point? I just keep doing the same thing every day, every day. But when Jupiter and Saturn have a good balance, then what we experience is the tedious work. But Jupiter says it's all for a higher purpose. Jupiter says this is all leading to a greater opportunity. And then we have that balance. So we do what it takes to be skillful, to endure the difficulties, while also seeing things from a much larger perspective. So with the malefic planets, we have to recognize in this world, to be successful, hard work is required. And so we need Saturn. We need Saturn to endure the difficulty. We need Mars to overcome the obstacles and the problems. We need a difficult Mercury to be able to research what could possibly go wrong. We need a moon which can, which can put up with uh, unpleasant emotions from time to time. Because again, when we have um, too much emphasis on the benefic planets, Anytime something deviates from a positive, joyful experience, people tend to shut down. And there has to be that balance because it can't go one way or the other. And in this regard, your astrologer should be able to look at each planet and say, here, here is the capacity of this malefic planet. Here is the capacity of this benefic planet. Here is where the imbalance is. And most of the time, we won't want to hear that because we kind of like the pattern that we're caught up in, the karma that we're caught up in, which again is why I spend most of my time teaching Kriya Yoga these days rather than astrology, because by going through yoga, you learn to, in a sense, transcend or move through um, attachment to these karmas represented by the planets. But hopefully you have a, a spiritually inclined astrologer and you're able to listen and really hear what the astrologer has to say. And that astrologer can point out you need to cultivate more of these malefic planets so that you have the ability to persevere, to endure, to succeed through sheer force of will if need be. Of course, you might also need to cultivate the benefic plants because we do have to be open to optimism as well. But there needs to be this balance within the benefic and malefic planets. So. Um, be careful about judging malefic planets as a terrible situation. Any situation can become an opportunity for growth. And in fact, that's exactly why we're here in this world, in this human experience. And if we run from the lessons of the cruel planets, or really what happens with the cruel planets that cause us difficulty is resisting learning from them. We don't want it. We avoid it. We push it away. And so we never grow. We never become strong in what they have to teach us. And then our life kind of suffers one thing after another after another. But if we can, on our own or with the help of an astrologer, 
learn how to cultivate the forces of the cruel planets, use them appropriately, then we'll find greater success in life. And then we'll find that even the worst uh, malefic planets can in ways become uh, a great blessing for us. So next up, we'll take a, a short look at the ascendance and how the ascendants impact how a planet is going to function um, within our chart for good or for bad. And I've already done a, a series of videos on this called the planets of each ascendant. It's a long series of videos. I go through each planet for each ascendant. So I'd encourage you to go back through this YouTube channel and find those videos related to the ascendants in question for you or for others, um, because that'll give you greater insights um, also, um, through the Ashul Vedic Astrology Apprenticeship Program, we do spend a lot of time uh, exploring how planets are going to work for each ascendant, specifically related to yogas, how yogas function and how to really see if a yoga is going to give good things or if a yoga is not going to give anything at all or if a yoga is going to give the opposite of what you expect. Um, so all this takes some, some time and skill to discuss, and that's why we have some other videos available to you.